After hearing an urgent distress call from Earth, many of the universe's most unique dogs have all stood up and arisen and flown to Earth in order to have all of Earth's inhabitants name them in the game Dogs of the Galaxies. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Dogs of the Galaxies, in which you'll be playing as a human attempting to name the most unique and bizarre dogs ever to be found. In this game, you're gonna get a ton of cards here, and basically you're going to be describing dogs that you see on the cards and have everybody else attempt to name them. It's a judging style game in which players are going to deduce uh, which dogs are which type of uh, name they should get based on the description and then the reveal will be the most interesting unique aspect of it all of course with unique dogs and of course rare dogs and all different types of dogs that have certain rules for each of them anyway let me go ahead and show you what's in the game dogs of the galaxies and then i will uh, play around or so and tell you what i think about it so here we have the game dogs of the galaxies and everything included in the game which is mainly the box the rules here and all the different doggies that you're going to be getting a chance to uh describe to your friends and the the game's pretty simple. There's three types of dogs. You're going to have the commons, the epics, and the legendaries. Commons, you're just going to describe and they're going to name them. The epics, you're going to describe, but you're going to use a keyword and they're going to name them with that keyword in the name. And then the legendaries, it's the same thing as the epics, but additionally, they'll have to make a sound with that specific dog. And then you're going to choose between who does the best sound and name, if you possibly can, and give them points. So there's one point for the blue, two points for the epic, and three points for the legendary. And whoever gets the 10 points for versus the winner. After I go as the breeder, the next player is going to get a chance to go and draw the cards and so on and so forth. There's a ton of different cards and there's also imaginary dogs. So I guess you can kind of make up your own dog as well, which is what we did. Just made it up just as we went along and had, had players try and guess that our imaginary dog that didn't exist. Um, and of course they have just a ton of different types of dog arts. As you can see, they also have flavor text on all of the different dogs. And that's pretty much what you're getting in the game. Normally we do a cut to B-roll here, but in this case, we're gonna get Gran over here and we're gonna play the game by flipping over these. Now normally you're gonna be shuffling this deck up and it's gonna be random, but I wanna give you guys an idea of what all the three different types of cards do. So I'll go ahead and cut all these decks up just once so that make sure we don't get the same dogs as we did previously and we're gonna start so here we go uh, the first one's a blue one right so I just need to give us a name and this one says I came from a land far away to share knowledge and this one reminds me of the never-ending story that dragon thing but it's a snake looking dog it's got like little snake cuts on them they're not cuts but like the different colors and whatnot very thin with a little beard and it's flying around in the air this Call is what the dog looks like Inu the wise he knew the wise for this dog. Okay. So in this case here, uh, everybody else would also get a chance to name the dog. And then I, as the dog breeder, would then choose the person who best named the dog. And I would give them the card. In which case, well done, Inu. That is a great name. You're going to score one point. The next player is going to get to go. So it'd be maybe Grant would be the next dog breeder. And he'd draw a card. And we're just going to use the next version of Rarity. So you get an idea of how that works. The keyword for this one is dark. And this is what the, the dog looks like. And it is it reminds me of the evil great mouse detective. The evil bad villain, I guess. Well, no. The brain from Pinky and the Brain. It reminds okay. me of that kind of. He's taller though. He's got a, a, a red like cloak going on with some kind of like bizarre symbols on it. And down below it says, The sun is rising and I will return to my mansion. So he's kind of an elegant looking I mean, Pinky and the Brain style dude. Uh, so you have to name Dark has to be in the name. What is what what do you think? We'll call him Darklight Spigleton. Darklight Spigleton. Okay, and then of course we I would everybody else would do the same as well, and two points would be awarded to that person. And then our final one here, this one is to keyword morph, and this is a legendary here, as you can see. Uh, this one is gonna say, I can transform into anything. And he's half bird, half dragon, half dog, half with a snake tongue, he's got some fangs coming out. He's got some kind of like weird little ears popping out and he's got his front two paws and then his back two chicken feet. We'll call him Morpheus the Dream Eater. And he also gets, this is a legendary, you need to make a sound too. 
Wow, that's an excellent sound from Morpheus the Dream Eater. And once again, you'd pass along. And in this case, if he actually scored all three of these cards, he would get three, four, five, six points, which means he only needs four more points to win the game. And that's the basic idea of how to play the game Dogs of the Galaxy. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about my review now. Yeah, liked it. So that was basically Dogs of the Galaxy, in which you're going to be playing a party-style game. And what's cool about this game is you can pretty much have as many players as you want. In fact, I don't even think it has amount of players on here because really you could play with everybody in your entire party. You're just basically having an imagination party in which players are going to deduce what is on the cards based on what you are saying. And because everybody's going to describe things differently, it's always very likely that even if you come up with the same dog on a different party on a different date with different people, you're not going to have the same description. And it might be similar in some ways, but you'll have people with different names and different ideas as well. It plays similar to games like the Apples to Apples and that kind of stuff, but it has a family... Uh, it also has this family aspect where it's uh, you're adding imagination to the cards and you're trying to deduce what things are going to visually represent in your mind. It's interesting. It's very unique. I don't think I've seen a game where you're actually trying to uh, describe, where you're, somebody is describing something to you and then you have to give it a name or attach a name with certain things like a sound and whatnot. Really, really unique. Really fun. This is definitely a game I would not suggest playing just a couple people. You're going to want more people for this game. In fact, I would even say five or more players is what really makes this game enjoyable. But then again, the more players you have, the longer the game takes. Now, of course, you can reduce the amount of plays or just go around a couple times and it'll work out just as fine. It doesn't really matter how many points you actually get to. It's just whatever you feel like whenever people are like, okay, let's play something else, you know, that's when you probably stop. Because realistically, this game could go on for a very long time at 10 points with 10 players. Overall, I had a lot of fun with this game. A lot of people here had a lot of fun as well. This is going to be one of those games for people who enjoy storytelling, people who enjoy using their imagination, and definitely family, kid-style game. Dogs of the Galaxy is a lot of fun, and I think you guys should check it out down below in the description if it meets your, your needs. For those of you who are more strategically minded, to those of you who enjoy more of a thicker-style board game, you're already going to know this is probably not the game for you, necessarily. Uh, but if you do enjoy a, a light atmosphere with some really cool art. I really enjoy all the different arts, all, all, all the dogs, especially the uh, the legendary ones. These guys have some really cool artwork going on, the, the void and whatnot. And they all have really cute flavor text, which is something I enjoy as well because you can add that flavor text to give your dog a name, right? And then of course, somebody who's played the game a whole bunch and then they run into this dog that's being explained. They're like, wait, wait, what dog is that? I, I've played this game enough times. It's like, well, it's an imaginary dog. You gotta name it yourself. Anyway, take a look down below if you're interested. Of Dogs of the Galaxy, out your time! All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, go and check the rest of our videos. Check YouTube, like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help. We do greatly appreciate it, as well as take a look at the game Dogs of the Galaxies, currently down below in the description for you to go ahead and purchase if you'd like, as well as take a look at our friends, unfilteredgamer.com, our personal best friend, where we do giveaways, give, uh, giveaways, artists we got our kickstarter page going on tons of good stuff we're giving away the game dogs as well as the new bloodborne from simon you can pick up on our site as well as our friends everythingboardgames.com and the giveaway geek two great sites you can get a lot of different things on as well and we're doing a lot of partnerships with them all all right guys that's all i got for this time my brain is melting and i look forward to seeing you in the galaxies with some really crazy cute doggies